Welcome back. Today we're gonna to work on my Summit Hydraulics rear remotes that I added on to my B2601. And we're gonna to try to fix a problem we had huh. last summer. That's pretty awesome. Well, it's sliding. Uh -oh. It's sliding. It's sliding. That's because it doesn't have a check valve. Check it out. It's a D03 double piloted check valve. And I purchased it from uh, Bailey Hydraulics. Last summer I did this. And then recently I was told that uh, Summit makes it for the same manifold. And I checked the price and it's actually cheaper to buy at Summit. I've already got this, so I'm gonna make this happen. I purchased this last summer. So I think uh, I'm over the whatever policy, return policy is. So I'm gonna have to make this one work. It's the same exact holes that are on the manifold and on the directional valve. So it should just bolt right up. And they sell it with longer bolts. That's what makes it, I think, cost more is that I had to purchase the bolts separate. We're gonna use a four millimeter Allen wrench for the bolts. And if you haven't already, you should have a quarter inch drive torque wrench. I mean, that way at least you know everything's torqued down exactly the same. If you don't know what a double piloted check valve does, it's basically a locking block. Here's an example of one that's on my top link. And on the manifold, it's gonna go between the directional valve and so it'll get sandwiched in between the block and the directional valve, so it'll be kind of like in here. So then this will stick out all the way over here. I'm not gonna do it to this top one. I use this circuit, second up from the top link. So this set of rear remotes, it's gonna go between that one, up in there. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the ignition on, and then we're gonna cycle all the buttons for the manifold. Make sure all the pressure's off. That's manual. I'm just doing it to get whatever pressure in the system off because I don't want to make a mess. I'm sure oil's going to come out anyway. I'm going to put a rag under here. It's probably not going to catch all of it, but try to catch as much oil as I can. We'll un undo the electrical, which is just push these tabs in, push and pull. I'm going to do the one on top just so uh, I'm not fighting between the wires here. All right, that's out of the way. That's one. Got a little rust in there. That's that. And there's a mess. Don't forget to put yourself some Loctite blue on the threads here, just a little bit. And the way it goes on, there's the bolt hole and there's a little hole here. So that matches up with the block. I'm guessing there usually is a pin or something there to make sure you're putting that in the right spot. But just line up that hole with the other hole. See there's that bolt hole and that little hole next to it. I'm gonna match that up. This is gonna be kind of fun because now we got two things going on here. I wonder how that's gonna work. And of course it's an oily mess. All right, we're gonna, I got the two bottom screws in or bolts or whatever. Wish me luck. It would be easier if there was a pin in that hole. Doing my best not to cross thread this. Okay, that one feels pretty good. Okay, I'm going to tighten it up to 20 inch-pounds, and I'm going to go in a crisscross pattern and make sure it's inch-pounds. That's one. Okay, now we're going to crank her up to 50 inch-pounds. That should be good. Okay, she's all plugged in. Of course, I'm going to have to start it to see if there's any leaks. I don't know how to simulate that big log I had on the back of this thing, so this is what I came up with. Okay, it's off the ground, so I'm gonna put you on time lap, shut the tractor off, 
We're gonna see if it sags. I'll come back for you later. I think it worked. I even bounced up on the back of it. And it's not letting go. Success. One thing I did notice is from these hoses on is where the pressure is gonna stop. If you bust a hose here, then your cylinder is gonna go down. So the check valve is blocking the fluid from the hoses to the cylinder now. So it's gonna make it harder to disconnect unless you're either halfway in between the stroke. If you're pegged out all the way, one line's gonna be higher pressure than the other and you won't be able to unplug it. Well, that was an easy fix. And in the future, when I get a side link, I can just plug right in with a regular cylinder and I don't have to deal with the locking block mounted to my cylinder because it's only a four inch stroke and it's a pretty tight fit. I kind of feel like I'm fixing two things with one move. Let me know what you think in the comments. I look forward to reading the comments. I can't wait for the weather to get better so I can just test this out on the property. If you want to see the making of this grapple, I have a video that I'll put up here so you can check it out. And don't forget, keep it on the sunny side.